G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net video series focusing on Windows Presentation Foundation applications shortened down to WPF applications. Okay, what this is going to allow us to do is create GUI applications or interactive programs. If you don't know what GUI stands for, the letters are G-U-I, Graphical User Interface. Okay, what that means is we can use buttons, we can use text boxes, check boxes, images, labels, you name it. If you've seen it in a program, you can use it or make it, basically. Okay, you may have seen some of my older videos where I used the Windows Form applications, and you might be wondering why I'm now just using WP applica um, bleh, applications if I can get the words out. The main reason is because. And I suppose if you want a really good reason, it's because WPF applications are Windows' most modern way of making GUI programs. The second reason is because Windows Form application still uses Microsoft's old API for drawing controls and forms, which means it uses a CPU, it's slower, and it's really hard to customize, and animations don't even try. They're really difficult in Windows Forms, whereas WPF applications are built on top of DirectX, which utilizes your graphics card, which means not only it is faster, it's more customizable, and animations and graphics are just going to be better and easier to use. The other thing is WPF applications use what's called XAML, or X-A-M-L, -M, which stands for Extensible Application Markup Language. I told you you'd be sick of the acronyms by now. But basically, XAML is Microsoft's new way of allowing programmers to um, program the, des the design of their interface. It's probably the easiest way I can put that. We're going to talk more about XAML in the third video, how to use it and how to work with it. But for right now, we're just going to create an empty application. I'm going to never talk about Windows Forms again, just WPF applications. We're going to click OK, wait for Studio to create our project, and I'm going to talk about the interface. The first thing you're going to notice is obviously you get a design window in the middle now. This is your form. This is the first form in, that in your application that Visual Basic has made for you. It also comes with one control on it by default, which is called the grid. That's why I clicked on the outside to highlight the whole form, okay? Because it's already got one control that we can start using. Now, this is where you're going to drop on all your buttons and your text boxes and your labels and arrange them out and resize them. You can also rename them. You can also put text inside them, color them, different things like that. Okay. You can fine tune them over here in the properties panel. Okay. So let's say I want to add a text box. You're going to click on toolbox. Okay. Type in a couple of words to filter it down. And I'm going to choose text box to drag it onto our form. You'll notice that I can drag it around quite easily, and those little red lines are the borders of the form, basically. It's just trying to give you a nice, neat way of doing it. I can resize it. That's not going to change the text size, just the text box size. And then if I want to change things about the text box, I can come down to the Properties panel and start typing them in. So if I don't like it saying text box, I can change it to hello and whatever. Now, because this has been made by Microsoft, it's going to behave exactly how you would expect a text box to behave. So, for example, if I start my program, just like we've always done, there's my program, already makes a window, gives me a little icon, gives me my close and maximize and minimize icons up here in the toolbar, and there's my text box. I can type in it. It works just like a default text box should in Windows. Okay, notice how it still says hello. Every time I start it, it's not going to save that setting. Okay, that's enough about the design window. Let's quickly talk about the Solution Explorer. We have more files over here. App Config, Application, and Main Window. Okay, App Config is exactly how it sounds. It's configuring your whole application. Application XAML is you adding in resources and different things. Main window is exactly how it sounds. That's your form, okay? That's your window that you're going to add things. And you can add more windows. We're just not going to do it in this video. You'll also notice these little arrows next to it. That means these guys have sub-items. So if I click on this guy, he has a main window.xaml.vb file. What this file is, is the code side of my window. So every window or form, whatever you want to call it, comes with a graphical side, the XAML side, and then the coding side, which is where you put all of the instructions like we did in console applications. All right. 
that's just something to keep in mind. There's a couple of ways you can get between those two windows there. You can either double click on these bad boys and that'll switch between them. You can click on the tabs if they're open. Okay, don't worry about closing them. You'll never lose them just because you closed it. Or you can right click on your form, go view code. Okay, or another way to get to your code from your form is F7 on the keyboard will jump there automatically for you. If there is a shortcut to go back, I'm not aware of it. Okay, so if anyone knows it, can you put it down in the comments for me and I can teach the world or you can teach the world because it's on the comments and I'm not going to steal your thunder. Anyway, the last thing I want to show you is the XAML window down here. As I said, I don't want to talk about this in detail because that comes in the third video. But if you don't like dragging and dropping and rearranging your controls up here, you can actually program them in and just type up what you want. So if I want to add a button, I can just do that and it adds in a gigantic button. Okay. Again, more detail in the third video. That was just a quick demonstration of how that works. So, how are we going to make our first application? First of all, I'm going to delete my button and my text box. I'm going to resize my window. Now, be careful. If you click here and try to resize, you're actually resizing the grid. How do I know that? Well, there's two ways. First of all, it says grid, grid down here. Second of all, it says grid over on the side. That means what I have selected is a grid. If I click on the top of my program, you'll see it says window, window, and window. It's pretty obvious. I've selected the bloody window. So let's just resize this, make him a bit smaller, and I'm going to add in a label, a text box, and a button. So let's filter him out. Label, press enter to add him. Text box, click, press enter, and a button. Not button text, a button. And rearrange these bad boys so we can see all three of them. And there we go. What I'm going to do, content for the label, I'm just going to have name, text box, I'm going to get rid of the words inside of it and leave it blank. And for button, I'm just going to put OK. Amazing, isn't it? Okay. So what they're going to do, they're going to type in the name, they're going to click OK, and we're going to say hello and whatever their name is on the end of it. So to add code to this button, there's a couple of ways you can do it. The way I like to do it, because it's just, you can see all of the different time ways you can interact with the button, is through the events properties down here. So the spanner are your properties, the lightning bolts are your events, or the ways you trigger your code, because now, remember, the user is in control, not the programmer. We'll talk about that in the next one. Next to click, I want you to double click in the box, and it automatically makes a sub for you. Button click. So. I'm going to go message dot message box dot show. Hello. This is just like a right line. Now you'll notice I can't say text box. That's because I haven't named my text box because I'm an idiot. Let's quickly name my text box. Just by clicking in the text box, I'm going to be lazy and call him text box one. Bad, 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 bad programming, but let's just get it over and done with. The reason I knew I didn't name it is because it wasn't blue. Okay, dot text. So because text box one is the entire text box, how do we get the words out of it? The words are just dot text. Hello, Chunderblus. Welcome to YouTube. And there it is. Hello, Nick. Poodle. All right, that's your introduction to WPF applications. I know it was short, boring, and not very detailed. But in the next one, we're going to get cracking. We're going to make a little application to change the colors of your forms and buttons and things like that. So we're going to see a lot more code. And we're going to play with the events a lot more. So thanks for watching the first video of this series, everybody. If you can comment down the bottom to tell me how it was, like and subscribe. That would tell me also and help me out. I'll see you in the next video. Catch you then.